Hi folks, welcome to my Bit Retro Journal. Today um, I'm going to be talking about um, uh, comp compiling basic programs. So uh, uh, what you see on the screen is just a basic program that I'm currently running. I can list it. Uh, it's called uh, Baton or Baton Twirler. Yeah, just a simple little basic program. I think what makes the, um, the QL sort of this interesting machine is that um, if I were to reboot it, it's sort of a, a cross between uh, a more modern, and you can tell I actually, I took the ICE ROM out and I have the Toolkit 2 ROM in because I want to do a little bit with multitasking today and it makes it easier. So I have a, 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 a separate ROM cartridge for Toolkit 2. But, um, so when you boot it up, now you can boot it up in monitor mode and in monitor mode, <clears throat> I don't have a monitor. I mean, it's going to composite. But in modern mode, it basically cre creates two screens. Right now, what you have is you have, um, um, so if I were to, uh, uh, so notice the screen sh shifts from red to blue. And the reason why is because I, I just entered a program without any, I don't know if I said 10 print, it would actually put that in at the top. But um, so there's two screens uh, that are overlapped, uh, screen uh, one and screen two, or window one and window two, and then there's window zero, which is my input. And if you had monitor mode, you actually would have window one and window two, and I think it's uh, red and white, and then you have a black uh, screen at the bottom. But in, in, in mode four, uh, now if, if, if I have it in TV mode, but do mode eight, uh, mode four, sorry, that's the four color mode, it gives me the high res, but it's still, so it'll give it in black and uh, red. So if I go 10, or if I say 10 print, yeah, you can see that uh, I have, uh, um, but uh, however you, um, whether you have it in mode four, which is the four color mode, or mode eight, which is the fault for a TV mode. Um, the, the, the look of it seems to be like, oh, this is no different from say a Commodore 64. Uh, the only difference is that you've got, uh, uh, um, you know, your cursor in, in the screen or, or a, a specy spectrum. Uh, and you, you sort of think about the outside as not being, uh, serviceable. But of course, on the QL, you get the entire display. Uh, it's just that's how it presents itself. So, you know, underneath it, there's this somewhat powerful Unix-like operating system that allows you to multitask and do all these other things. But you sort of, you know, if, if, you, if you don't know, you might think, like, oh, this is just a computer that lets me write basic programs like the Commodore 64 uh, or many other ones. Um, and, uh, and if I just, you know, write the... Uh, the central program, oops, go yo. Then, all right, you can, so you can do on this computer what you can do on many other computers. But again, there's, there's, uh, uh, it's a bit more powerful. Now I have, uh, uh toolkit to install, so I can actually do the job command, which doesn't exist, uh, jobs, which doesn't exist by default, but, um, um, yeah, let me clear the screen. But it already tells you that you only have this one job running, but you can have multiple jobs running. And so if I um, load again the uh, um, uh, load MDV8 baton, then what I have is uh, this baton twirler program, and I can run it uh, in this basic in this basic job, and I can run it in higher or lower resolution mode. It doesn't actually matter. <clears throat> But, um, so if I run it, it's going to ask me, you know, how, what's the tail for that? And I see 45. <clears throat> Off it goes, uh, doing the, uh, baton, uh, you know, twirling the baton. But again, I, I can't do anything else. And if I quit this, then I can do other stuff. So if I were able to, uh, compile it, uh, then I could run it as a job. And so <clears throat> that's what I want to talk about today. So there is a compiler and I have it actually, uh, uh installed on MDD7. Uh, let me just clear the screen. Dir MDV7. 
and it's probably going to be to the edge of the screen <clears throat> because baton twirl reorganized the screen but uh, oh <clears throat> yeah it's probably dir number two they probably changed the the color to mdv7 so this is what you get when you uh uh, mess with the uh, yeah so here we go so there you have um, so MDV1 just had its uh, ink changed to black and so it was printing on black on black um, but so, so there you see this is a supercharge and uh, it allows you to actually um, uh, compile basic programs and here's how it works uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move the camera in front so that um, it'll be easier uh, to see so let me do that okay so um, First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to reboot the computer so I can get the original um, screen back. Again, I'm going to hit uh, F2 for TV. Uh, again, Dura MDV7 is where my uh, turbo, uh, well, it's called Supercharged by Digital Precision. These are the same folks that made the um, Digital C uh, compiler that I use a lot. And so what I want to do is run the boot uh, program. And I modified this a little bit to make it run a little easier. So uh, it doesn't have uh, a drive uh, hard-coded in. It's going to ask for it. So it's on MDV7. And so that will load the um, a toolkit that it needs uh, for, for the um, supercharge compiler. And it flashed by very quickly. All right, so now what you do is you basically, so if I look under MDV8, uh, I have a bunch of basic programs, and I'm just going to show you how to compile um, how, how to compile each one. And what you do, you basically load it in. So Baton's the first one. So I'm going to load in MDV8, Baton Bass. And so it's a little different from the Digital C's, uh, the Digital Precision C compiler in that it it's not file-based. It makes you load it into memory. And I think the reason they do that is so that they let the QDOS parse the basic program for you. And so its parser can be much simpler. So here I have the program loaded. Um, and it's going to put it in, 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 in mode 4 when I run the um, supercharge. And the way you run that is you run merge MDV7 uh, supercharge. And what it's going to do is it's going to again ask me for a device, but it's going to flip the screen to a high res and then MDV7. <clears throat> and then off it goes. Um, but as soon as it has it in, it's going to, uh, yeah, here it is. I'm going to call it MDV8 uh, Baton EXE. Do I want no, I don't want a compilation with my listing. So it basically it gives you an error um, in the report file. So MDV, MDV7 report list. So it's going to write a report file on MDV7. And those are actually very handy. Um, a few times I've played with this, every time it gave an actual warning or something, that's usually why the program didn't perhaps run properly or misbehave. So right now what it's doing is it's literally scanning. And you can see that it's going to do this funky thing with the screen. And I think what it's doing is it's using screen memory as uh, additional memory because on the QL of 128K, 32K is used by the screen. And so it's actually using that uh, as part of its, its creating a binary image. And so that's why you see this sort of random stuff. So I just did the parse, and so now it's actually loading the um, code generator from the microdrive. And now it's building it. And again, you can see the screen change slightly, and it's there. It's it's finished its compilation. So, <clears throat> what do we got? MDV8, and we have Baton EXE. Now, if I go copy MDV7 uh, report list to console, uh, yeah, zero parse errors, zero warnings. Uh, you can see right at right at the top here. Um, again, the the, the normal behavior of QL is that it just override over its various windows and it doesn't really care. All right, so now if I actually execute it, exec mdv8 baton exe because it's an executable, it's going to run it. The, here it is, and uh, uh, again, now control C is going to move to different cursors. So here I can say 45 and it's going to run the baton drawer. But I can go back down here and, and do my other work. So I can say jobs, 
And again, if you've seen some of my other videos, you've seen me do this sort of stuff. So now I can, and I could actually run uh, the basic, and it'll actually run slower. You can see the 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 one of them is going to be running a little faster than the other. Um, uh, they look pretty close, but I think the the basic is going to run slower than the compiled. Um, and uh, but again, I, if I run the basic, I can't do anything else. So if I if I stop that instead and uh, execute another um, baton exe. Again, things stop when you're doing I.O. and that's actually pretty common on, on some of the other uh, multitasking computers. That's just, it's just a, 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 a high CPU intensive task uh, for these very um, low powered machines. <clears throat> so now I'm running two. And again, I can still do, uh, yeah, I can still do my Dura MDV8 uh, again, which when it's hitting the, but yeah, so that's multitasking. If I hit jobs, you can see that I have these two super uh, charged jobs running. Uh, there's supposed to be a way to change the name, but I haven't been able to figure it out yet. So if I go, um, I'm going to remove the jobs. One comma two comma zero, two comma three comma zero. So I'm just using the job, the tag, and the, and they're gone. Uh, if I were to reboot, and uh, so the nice thing is here, um, mode four. If I were to run MDV8 baton, uh, unlike running it in the shell, it creates its own set of windows and doesn't mess with mine. So the reason the windows were all screwed up is because I ran the MDV. Um, the baton bat basic program would just change windows one and two to be full screen. Uh, when it, when supercharge compiles it, uh, it actually doesn't do that. So here we're running that. And again, if I do per MDV eight, you'll see now that it has the original screen. So that's the other nice thing about running compiled programs. So yeah, this, this will run now, uh, while I'm doing other things. So, and in fact, I could probably do another compile if I wanted to. Uh, while this is happening, but I'm not going to be that that brave, so I'm just going to remove the job. Uh, so again, figure out what jobs are running. Our job one zero. So again, you can see very quickly how um, the QR goes from looking very much like oh, this looks a lot like uh, maybe a Commodore 64 uh, to here you're you know already running multiple jobs, etc. Okay, what else do we have? MDV8. So here was a little program that I wrote back in the 90s. And I was actually, I wanted to write a screensaver, like after dark. And so if I run this, it's going to be really slow. So I'm going to load MDV8 QL dark 10 bass. <clears throat> and so this is basically, instead of flying toasters, I wanted to do flying QLs. I'm going to change the code slightly because it's, it's going to be really slow. I think if I run this, um, it's loading it in. Uh, yeah, here we go. If I run this, uh, you're not going to see anything for a while. And the reason why is it's just really slow. And you can start seeing it, it's coming up here in the corner and what it's going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. And I think it's edit. 20, yeah, I'm going to change this from 215 to 190, uh, just so, again, to make it a bit more exciting and fun. So let me run this again. Here it goes. And there it goes. So basically, it it looks, you know, it's not quite a Q, it's just a square, but it's, you know, the, sort of the dimensions of the QL with wings on it. And uh, eventually, as this goes further down, what you'll see is that another one will appear here, and then there's another one eventually that appears down here. And that, that was just a prototype that I wrote, and I wrote it in basic. And that's sort of the perfect, uh, and it's not much to it, it's just basically calling these uh, line uh, drawing commands. Um, so another one that's perfect to compile. So what I need to do first, unfortunately, since I've already rebooted, is I have to do MDV7 boot, which is going to unfortunately 
um, because it does do a new, it's I'm going to have to reload uh, QO Dart. Uh, and since we are doing microdrives, if I had a floppy, uh, my floppy card in there, it would run a little faster. But um, yeah, that's just uh, the nature of uh, microdrives. And, and again, because the V drive emulates microdrives to where the QO can't tell, um, this is actually how fast it would run with microdrives. 8 QL dark. Because version 10 is basically what that means. So let's load it in. I'm going to change it to 190 again. And then I'll supercharge it. I'll compile it. So very convenient. Again, this is running on an unexpanded QL. Could I could just have a couple of MDVs in there if I wanted to. Edit 20. Make that uh, 190. And uh, so now I can say merge MDV7 supercharge. And this is going to go ahead and compile this for me. But now I can create basically executable tasks out of something I prototyped in basic and have um, a nice fast uh, MDV7. <clears throat> uh, so I've also, so on a 120K computer, um, I tried to compile an 18K basic program and it just ran out of memory. So the size of the pro and or and the end result of that 18k program is about ends up being like just over 40k. So the um, so MDV uh, eight we're going to call this QL dark DXE. Um. So yeah, it probably can compile a program between 10 and 15k in size. After that, it just runs out of memory, and you would need an expansion card. So it can't. It's not perfect. And I think with digital C, uh, the, the C compiler that I've used, uh, it certainly works on much larger programs and, uh, because it's file based. So it literally, um, uh, doesn't require you to load the program in, uh, into memory and then compile it. The digital C, uh, parser actually parses the entire C, um, C, small C language. Uh, and so it, it's a little bit more flexible, whereas here it's for folks that really like to, you know, they know basic, they've learned super basic, and they're able to, um, uh, they want they want to just create a task out of it, an executable process. Uh, and that's pretty handy. Again, if you had a, a, um, a, a trump card, which I do, but I don't use it very often, or uh, quite frankly, I'll just use a, the emulator because it'll go a little faster. But again, with my hobby, I always like to sort of showcase that, yep, this could have been done back in the day on an actual QL, if all you had was the unexpanded QL. And I think this stuff came out in the, um, uh, did it come out in 86 or 87? I'll put it in the comment um, when uh, Supercharge actually came out. But again, just another cool program by Digital Precision, uh, the makers of Digital uh, C, uh, also the Conqueror PC emulator. Uh, so they created a lot of, uh, well, they, they were responsible for distributing a lot of cool software, and they had various authors that wrote this stuff, but pretty high quality, and, uh, you know, it would have been nicer if the supercharged, just like Digital C, where it was file-based. I, I realize that that's not how um, uh, basic is. It's, you know, C is sort of designed that way. Um, let me uh, copy, uh, again, let's look at the report. I've learned to look at the report, because if there's anything, any issues, so warnings are okay, but if there's... Uh, a lot of times you'll get warnings that says doesn't return a parameter, which is fine. But other warnings where it says missing statement. Oh, copy MDV7 uh, report list to console. Yeah, so these are just normal ones where it says parameters are not returned. As long as it doesn't have, there's a missing statement. When there's a missing statement, your code starts misbehaving. Um, and so, yeah, let, let's run this now. So now we have a task, uh, exec, uh, MDV, uh, eight. Oh, it's actually blur MDV eight. And we should have, uh, yeah. And actually now I do have, uh, MDV eight. You can see if you want to see a little bit of the, uh, the size of the, this of course is going to take a little longer. I mean, yeah, so you can see the size of this. So the Tom is only about, a little under 2K. QL Dark was a little over 2K. Jupiter's another one. Noel, I'll, I'll do that one as well. So Noel uh, from Re Noel's Retro Lab did a a video on on, on the speed of, of various computers running his little loop. And so um, I will show you 
his compile just to see how fast it ends up running. And then you can see the um, the executable. So QL dark ends up being uh, 8,800 bytes compiled, whereas it's only, yeah, so it grows almost a factor of four. I think it, there's just something about 5K of in, uh, added stuff it adds before it actually does the coding. And certainly some of these, if you did these in machine code directly, they would be smaller and perhaps faster. But there is a convenience here, very small uh, 8K program. Uh, yeah, let's run it. MDV8, QL dark exe. And what you'll see too is that this is going to run a little quicker. Not the file loads again, because that's the microdrive. And uh, <clears throat> there it is. Yeah, you can already see it's running a little faster. And now it's actually very much like a screensaver because it, now the reason is that it sort of halts there is because there's actually another, uh, it's updating three of them at a time. So uh, eventually one is going to pop out right there. And then, so it's basically dry them off screen. I didn't, it's very simple logic. And if you draw off the screen on the QL, it'll just, um, it'll still do the draws. It just doesn't show them in the display. So at one point, one is going to show up here and eventually one is going to show up here. And you get to see this here in a second, but definitely running faster. Uh, and, and if I wanted to, yeah, you can see the next one's running. Uh, and if I let it go a little further, I don't want this video to get too long, but I could run multiple ones of these. Yeah, so here comes the second one. And yeah, so this would be, you know, now that it's an executable, I could, I could run this by having it sort of run and sit there and look for key strokes. And after a certain time, it just sort of clears the screen and does that and keeps looking for more key strokes. And when that happens, it'll just stop and clear itself out. Yeah, so you can actually create a, a quick and uh, easy screensaver that sort of sits there. Now, 8K is a little expensive for that, but again, if I wanted to, however, exec MDV8 QL dark exe, I can have two. I can have multiple. And you, of course, it's going to slow down because of the process. There's only so much. But again, you know, the supercharge lets people that aren't um, machine code programmers, they only can do basic. Supercharge lets people that only have that ability, they, they can start multitasking programs. So now you can see that uh, you've got uh, um, more, right? Because this is just that one a little earlier on. So as this moves down, uh, you're going to get more and more stuff. So as this is running, and I'll kill both of those in a second, but let me see what else I have on my agenda. And again, I, I always love to showcase the multitasking of the QL because it's one of those things that kind of creeps up on folks and it's like, Oh yeah, I, I keep forgetting that it does that. Um, I will do basically, um, I'll probably do, so Jupyter is just a, a little program that uh, draws uh, uh, dot patterns to come up with, um, looks like Jupyter. It's not, it's, act, it's actually not uh, um, uh, super exciting. So I'll probably skip that. And then term uh, is something that I actually wanted to play with. I don't think I wrote that, but it's a basic terminal emulator. So probably too slow otherwise, but I bet if I compile it, I could uh, use it. So the two that I want to use, uh, uh, compile, uh, is uh, I'll do Mines next, which is a Minesweeper program. And uh, then uh, I'll finish up with uh, uh, Noel as final test. So let me do that. So again, eventually this one's going to have a follower as well too. So let's see when that shows up. Um, and again, the reason there's a pause is because it's actually doing... There's one off screen, so you can see this one's coming out now. So basically it's these two, and then there's a third one. And eventually the third one's gonna show up as well. But yeah, so let's, uh, we we don't have to reboot actually, because we do have, we can just kill these. Uh, is the other one gonna finally show up? I uh, don't know. Uh, let me, yeah, I don't want this video to go over 30 minutes. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm cautious about it. Are we going to get, yeah, so you can see that one's finally showing up. And so that will be the third one that'll, that'll come. Oh, can you see it on the screen? I'll do one more round and then I'll move on. But I'm not sure if you can see that there's a dot coming up right there. It's going to come here. So now you can see that it's the bottom of the, and that's the idea is that you would have, you know, the toasters, uh, only one running at a time, but uh, uh, 
And so they're sort of in sync now. These two here, that's kind of funny. Yeah, so that one's coming into play. All right, let, let me kill those jobs. Our job one, three, oops, three, zero. Our job two, four, zero. Okay, so let's do one more. Uh, let's new everything. And uh, so I'm gonna load um, mines. So if I go load MDV uh, eight, I think it's called mines super basic. The reason it's, I have mines super basic is because I have a, a, it was originally written for the ZX81 and I was testing with the ZX simulator and then I'm like, oh, I should actually run this on the, um, on the, on the, Q, um, on the QL. All right, here it is. And so let me just run it. And I'm going to change the keys. Left, right, down, up, space. And so now it's just going to load it. And again, once I compile it, you can, you'll definitely be able to see the speed difference here between the two. And uh, I just wanted to load it and just see if I can't get it to clear out uh, a large swath of screen. That's the idea. It's definitely faster than the when it's running in the ZX simulator, but uh, uh, this is also going to speed up once it's compiled. So let's... Uh, See if I can't find an empty spot. It's always hard to find those things, but let's see if I can get lucky. Here we go. And you can see how long it takes. Yep, it's got a, there we go. That wasn't a bad one. Uh, let's see if this opens up any avenues on that. Good, so yeah. So, all right, so let me um, actually um, run it. Merge MDV7 supercharge. And that will uh, compile this. And then we are going to run that really quickly. And then we're going to finish up with Knowles. And for Knoll, I think um, I will reboot because this did mess up the screen. So MDV8 um, minus SBEXE. And uh, no, I don't want a listing. And in the seven report list, and overwrite it. And here it goes. Um, this is probably the the largest program of the bunch. Um, I think the. Um, The largest I've tried to compile uh, was 20k or 18k, and that didn't work. Um, so I think it probably it, you know, maybe a little bit over 10k is probably the largest I can compile. But um, for, otherwise, you need uh, more memory. Uh, but this is like a, a bit more sizable code. So now it's loading the code generator. And here we go. And it's going to generate the executable. Yeah, here we go. And let's, let's run it. There it is. So dir and dv8. There it is. Um, again, and the V8, if I do it that way, I can see the different sizes. Again, this is already dictated by the slowness of the micro drives. I just want to see how big mine's SB is. The executable. So the original one was 4,500 bytes, and so the executable, so you now we can see the different executables that we've already compiled, Baton, QL Dark. Oh, it just went off screen, that's, that's too bad. Um, I need this, the NDV8 mines SBEXE. That's the one I wanted to actually see. Yeah, 1,200, okay. So, execute it. Oh, and this one I have to execute with a W flag because uh, the way it does I.O., otherwise you can't get to it. 
minus sd exe. Right, when you get an out of error message, what that means is you have to run this program. MDV7 data space uh, task. So they like, they like to name theirs task. I like exe. Uh, but what this program does is, so the data, it gives a 2K of data space, but mines it does a lot of dimensioning of arrays. So it actually needs a little bit more. And so you can change that here. It'll tell you what it was before, which is the fault is two. You say eight. It's done. MDV, oops, again, with, with a W. MDV eight mines SBEXE. And now we get to see the actual speed of this. Once it loads it in from memory, here it is. So now I'm going to change. Boom, boom, down, down. But now you can see, yeah, it speeds along. Look at that much faster. So definitely um, worthwhile to compile that. Now, all right, so let's see if I can get lucky. Here it goes. And you can see that it really clears it out much faster. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, so com compile definitely worked. All right, I'm going to reboot this uh, just for the last test. Um, and uh, again, load the supercharge and I'm going to run the um, uh, program then I'm going to compile it and I'm gonna run it again and you'll see how and again this is a Knowles program uh, I did add a, a, a timestamp for the top and the bottom no test bass uh, if I list it yeah. now if I run it you can see that and it should take about I think it's 39 seconds, so this should be done at 1.37.09. And then once we compile it, hopefully it'll take less time. <laughs> That's the idea. And there it is, 39 seconds as expected. So now we're going to, again, MDV7 supercharge it. The other nice thing I've learned about this is, because I've tried it on the emulator as well, is if you, uh, it uses the screen mode, uh, that you have presently, so it actually reads the screen mode. So if you run it uh, in a in a you know if you if your window one is larger and you're running it uh, and you're compiling it and, and you're using that default window, it'll actually adjust that size. So that's pretty nice too. So it doesn't make any assumptions. All right. So MDV eight no test exe. We don't want. So what that second option is actually asking is, do you want in the report, do you want to also include the code? And that just adds a lot of stuff. Seven. It's going to ask if you want to overwrite it, to which we say no. I mean, yes. Why? All right. Does it compile? Again, this is going to go really quick because it's a really short program. Yeah, and it's going to literally run the code generator now and you can see the size of it obviously by how much it puts on the screen again the v drive emulates the micro drive if you had the other sd card reader it would be really fast or floppy so there's definitely ways to speed this up here we go so i'm actually going to put this back in mode eight and then exec mdv eight no test exe and here we go I didn't. Here we go. So if it's 55, it's seven seconds. Um, it might have been just, yep, seven seconds. So supercharge, a way to um, speed up your programs, make them into tasks so that you can use uh, the jobs menu and have things running multiple times. And uh, um, kind of fu a fun tool that allows you to um, uh, create more sophisticated programs in basic as you start and then compile them uh, again i personally prefer using c but it does uh, allow you to uh, if you only know basic to do that uh, i'd be interested to know if, if there are similar programs for commodores out there uh, commodore 64s vic 20s I, obviously the um, amiga has uh, c compilers and whatnot do they do they have basics as well I mean, basic is not so prevalent on the Amiga, so it's not as important. Anyway, I will end here today. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.